my name is Jean Risk. Um, uh, I was sent to uh, Cameroon by the RSS uh, over the summer um, from April to June to supervise students at the African Institute for Mathematical Sciences. Um, so this is what the presentation is about. Uh, it's it's going to be 20 minutes really. Uh, it's a bunch of photos, so uh, m not much statistics. Uh, so um, I'm currently doing a postdoc at the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. Um, um, I recently finished my PhD in statistics at the University of Limerick. And I'm a member of the Royal Statistical Society, um, but I keep forgetting to renew my membership. I think I should do this. this <laughs> uh, um, um, I'm going to tell you what, what I'm working on at the moment at RCSI. So I'm, um, working, I'm actually in a project called Surge Africa. So the aim of the project is to uh, increase surgical capacity at um, uh, rural hospitals in, in, uh, in Africa, uh, basically in Tanzania, Malawi, and Zambia. So uh, there are some um, uh, rural areas in Africa where there's hospitals, but there are no surgeons. So the idea of the project is to, um, so basically the patients, they travel about like six, seven hours from a rural area to a, a central hospital to get a surgery. So what, what we're doing is we're trying to bring uh, surgeons from central hospitals to train non-physician clinicians at rural hospitals. So uh, this is the main idea. And the project is generating a lot of data, and um, my role is to clean the data, analyze it, and fit models. I'm the only statistician in the team. So that's it. Uh, now back to AIMS. Uh, the African Institute for Mathematical Sciences um, um, is um, <coughs> founded by, uh, in 2003 by the African-Canadian mathematical physicist Neil Turok. Um, he, is, he was actually the chair of uh, uh, mathematical physics in the uh, University of Cambridge. And uh, he's basically, uh, he's, he's now, he's currently based in Canada. Uh, there are six uh, centers, AIMS centers in Africa, Senegal, Ghana, Cameroon, Rwanda, Tanzania, and South Africa. It's actually postgraduate center, so the students, when they go there, they get an MSc. It's a one-year MSc, and they get, um, it's an MSc in mathematical science. So the students, um, they, they study, like, it's a structured uh, uh, MSc. <coughs> they do, uh, there's like a dissertation phase <coughs> in the summertime. So they work on a project and write theses. Uh, the funding or the money in, in AIMS, it comes from donations really. Uh, the students uh, who uh, attend, who, who basically get accepted into the program, they get free accommodation, they live on campus, um, uh, free food and a monthly stipend of about 50,000 African franc, uh, which is about 65 pounds. Uh, 65 pounds is still not much in Cameroon, uh, but believe it or not, the students save it and send it back to their families. So the students, they actually come from all over the African continent. So they apply, it's an application process, they apply and then they get accepted. So some of them get rejected. Um, so um, where is it? Oh, so the role of the RSS. Um, uh, so the RSS is one of AIM's academic partners. Um, what they do is they send lecturers um, 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 in the wintertime to uh, give intensive courses in statistics. Uh, there are literally three week courses, and then they uh, propose pr projects uh, for the dissertation phase. Uh, now, uh, Emmanuel is the link between uh, the RSS and AIM, so he's the one who interviewed me, uh, sent me there. And then uh, these are some of the lecturers who uh, propose projects and supervise students there during the dissertation phase. So they did not. They, I don't think these uh, uh, lectures went to Africa, so they supervise students via Skype. That's why they needed a tutor like me to go there and be the link between them and the students. So uh, uh, you have uh, Anthony there from University of Augsburg, um, um, Anthony and Wynne. So I never met those people, just via Skype. Monica Perani, Imperial College London, and Sam Cuthbertson <coughs> from, is a senior association, <coughs> UK civil service. Uh, I'm sure there, there's more involved, but those are the people who I dealt with. So uh, <coughs> where is the center? It's, it's actually in a town called Limby. It's at the west side of Cameroon. Uh, it's a coastal town uh, just at the Atlantic. Um, if you look at the travel advice uh, website, you can see that Limby is actually uh, highlighted in orange, which is advice against all but essential travel. Now, the reason is because uh, there's conflict there in Cameroon between the uh, Anglophone and the Francophone regions. 
Uh, and the problem is that Limby is just at the border. So it's a francophone area, and Ames is there. And then um, uh, it's safe, but you have to be careful. Uh, in, um, uh, there's a strike Monday, so every Monday everything shuts down. Uh, they, we, we don't teach. Um, uh, shops are not allowed to, to open, and we can't wander around. So we have to stay indoor. Uh, this is a, a view from uh, the centre. Actually, that's a 20-minute walk from the centre. So just to show you that, it's literally a, it's a, it's a coastal town. Um, so this is the centre there. Um, uh, the students live there, actually. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a three-minute walk from, uh, from uh, a bakery called Faco Bakery. Uh, that's the only shop, grocery shop. That's, I mean, uh, the others are probably 20 minutes away. And it's four minutes away from the nearest hospital. Uh, the mode of transport is taxi uh, or a uh, motorbike. Um, I prefer the motorbike, as you can see there. Um, uh, this, uh, it's not recommended. You know, when I went there, the, the academic director, Marco, he's Italian, he said those are very dangerous, so don't go near them. But obviously, I didn't listen. Because they're actually it's faster and uh, they're cheaper. Um, I mean, more adventurous. Um, these charge me more because of this, because of my size. So <laughs> you can see the, the guy there is he's, he's very careful because because of the load. Um, so um, what was my role as a tutor? Yeah. So during the dissertation phase, students they picked projects. Um, uh, the center is not only for statistics; it's a mathematical science. So most of the students picked maths projects, and some of them picked a statistics a statistics project. So my, my role is to, was to kind of assist them in, in, in it's like answer their statistics questions and then be the link between them and their supervisors. So be there during the video call and make sure the communication is ongoing, everything is clear. Uh, make sure to take notes and uh, follow up with the students. Um, um, see if they're really doing what the supervisor told them to do. Uh, proofread their work, um, uh, have weekly meetings, um, and uh, you make sure that they have to meet deadlines as well. Uh, some of them, they do miss the deadline for submission, so you have to keep an eye on that. Uh, uh, it's, 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 there's a lot of work, so there is a lot of work in terms of proofreading, uh, supervising, asking questions. And I was there from 8 until 8 in the morning, until 10 at night, just because the students live there, so all what they do is they just, they just work on their projects, so you have to be available for them. At the end of the week, you report to the academic director, um, and you can uh, address any issues you face during the week. Uh, some of the projects, uh, just to show you the level of the uh, uh, mathematics or statistics that they, that they did in there. Uh, I, th I think this presentation is for those who are really interested in volunteering, <coughs> so I'm just going to... Uh, just to show you what kind of statistics you're going to be dealing with or mathematics. Now, um, one of the projects is, uh, is in stochastic differential equations for finance, uh, pricing whether derivatives using uh, or, or steam Olympic process. So this is um, basically on um, um, uh, insurance, when you insure your company or whatever against the weather. Um, the project was about modeling the volatility really in the, in the, uh, in the SDE. So here's James, and he worked on modeling the volatility using Fourier series. So it was like a season of volatility and stuff. So uh, that was, a, that was a, um, just a summary of what the project was about. So we have an SDE project here, and then we have uh, modeling school capacity data. So this project, uh, James used data from the states. Uh, and here, uh, this is Leah. She used the, <coughs> that's a, that's a, kind of a data-driven project, modeling school capacity data. Um, uh, this data is from England. So Leah looked at the, uh, at the shortfall and excess in school places in England. So uh, can we, let's say, uh, if we have shortfall here and excess in seats in here, can we just move students around depending on their geographical location? Can we do this? So she looked at this. Uh, it was a very, very interesting project. Um, uh, so that's, that's the data from England. Uh, another project here with a time series study of ambient air pollution and mortality. So uh, Moses looked at the uh, uh, mortality rate or the, the effect of air pollution on the cardiovascular diseases. Uh, so it's a, it's a time series project. He used uh, the Poisson uh, regression with covariates. And then uh, he used also data from London. 
So as you can see, we did very well in, in terms of taking advantage of the students to solve our problems here in <laughs> Europe. <laughs> Uh, this is also a data visualization project, review of cartograms for displaying spatial data. So Stephen looked at the, uh, so a cartogram is when you, let's say this is a map of Ghana, is when you kind of distort an area depending on the size of the variable. So let's say this is the population size, this, this, these are the same the maps, this is Ghana. And then, uh, as you can see, this population here is, is, is larger, so the, the map is distorted, so it's enlarged in the middle, just to kind of reflect the size of the population in that, re in that region. So what Stephen did, he's lo he looked at the mathematics, or the algorithms behind the cartograms. So he looked at the algorithms in R. So he studied the mathematics. It was a very mathematical project. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that's it. But I received questions from different projects as well, so not only these, these are the main projects that I supervise and, I, and the students that I looked after and asked their questions. Um, and then, uh, so when I first, um, uh, when I first arrived and I started to, to chat to the students, so <coughs> the, the, the most common question you'd ask them is, okay, what is your project going to be about? What are you doing? What project did you pick? And then I was uh, fascinated <coughs> with the way they described their project. So I was literally at the, so I arrived there at the beginning of the dissertation phase, so they already picked their projects, and some of them started already working on them. So they, the excitement there was fascinating. I mean, they broke it down in, an, in, a, in a very, like, a clear way. So I was like, first, some of the projects, I never heard of them in my life, and I didn't know that we could actually use maths to solve them. And they were so excited about it. It was like, and I, I myself did a lot of uh, thesis in three competitions, so where you can actually talk about your thesis in three minutes. I was like, we should definitely run a thesis in three competition in Ames Cameroon. And we did it. So I had to, uh, so I went to the director, I convinced him. Uh, I had to fight a little <coughs> bit as well, because they thought that's going to be wasting the students' time, because it was, nothing like this was done in Ames Cameroon for the last 10 years. So no, that's going to uh, waste the students' time, and then we can't do it. Um, but um, I had to fight for it, because it was actually helpful <coughs> for them. Why? Because some students were they didn't speak English, they're francophones. And they had to do a thesis at the end, thesis defense, the presentation at the end. So I, I thought that was a preparation for the introduction of the defense. This is how they, they should start the addressing what the project is about. Because um, what they had to do is literally write a paragraph, memorize it, and then tell us what, they, what they're working on. So um, yeah, and then uh, we did it. We did it, it was an amazing event. Um, uh, they absolutely loved it. We had 49 students, and 49 of them were engaged. Uh, they they were they, they dress up. So we did we did actually we had about like four heats and a final. So over like four weeks, they took it very seriously, and they were so excited. They dress up on Friday, you know, the guys with shirts and the girls with dresses and everything, makeup. Um, so um, it was it was it was really really exciting. And then, um, and they were really good. They were really, really good. Um, we had judges as well. Uh, this is uh, Marco, the academic director. We had lecturers as well. Uh, in the middle, uh, Prof. Giselle, local lecturer. She's the one who thought that it's a, it's a bad idea. We can't do it. <coughs> and then she ended up being a judge. <coughs> so um, uh, those are the winners at the end. And then we had food. There's a story here. This food was donated. Uh, how? It was donated by Faco Bakery, you know, the photo I showed you at the beginning. Because they uh, ripped me off, and the students. So when I first arrived there, um, there was a problem in, you know, I'll tell you the story, I'm not sure if you have time. So um, I was new to the area and everything. And then I was, I was looking for a grocery shop. So I went to Faco Bakery, um, I went with one of the tutors. And I just wanted bread and cheese. So um, I, I said, just bread and cheese, please. And she said, 2,000 francs. I said, OK, I give her 10,000. Because I didn't have like change. I had like, big bills, you know, coming from Europe. Don't have smart. So um, uh, I give her 10,000, um, uh, um, which is about, that's about like 12 pounds. And then uh, my, uh, my colleague kind of called me. So I turned, I answered, and I went back. And then the, the, the lady there was staring at me. 
so she was expecting me to pay her. I said, what's going on? She said, you didn't pay me. So I had to give her another 10,000 because I didn't want to argue, it was new. Uh, she was a bit aggressive. Uh, I didn't say anything and then I went back to the centre and I shared the story with some of the students and then every student had the exact same problem <laughs> with that lady or with the shop, including staff members and everything. So what I did is I uh, um, uh, grabbed two students, I went to the manager there and I said, <laughs> that's really funny, I said, I think uh, most of your profit uh, is, is from uh, our students because we have about 100 students in there. It's not 100, I said 100. <laughs> and then what we're going to do is we're going to stop buying everything from you. <coughs> so we're going to actually go to town, which is a 20 minute walk, and buy from the other Faco Bakery. We're going to stop buying uh, uh, food from your shop. Um, so um, what he did is um, he apologized, and then uh, he came down the next day. Um, he brought a cake, and I told him that we have an event in two weeks' time. Um, um, I wish we could just keep that cake. Of course we can't. So he, kinda, he was kind of forced, not forced, he was nice. So he donated all the food <laughs> for our final event, the, the thesis of the three event. So that was all donated. And then the, um, the, the, prob the problem with the, with, the, uh, with, the, with the lady in the shop was solved. Now, uh, uh, so um, yeah, so um, what I did as well is um, it's a morning training session. So I'm, 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 I'm the CrossFit trainer myself. I, I train in the morning, so um, I, I used to get up in the morning and train, so two of the, two of the tutors saw me and they joined, and then we thought maybe it would be a good idea if we could tell all the students. So all the students were engaged and, and, and they wanted to train, so I was training them uh, twice a week at 6.30 in the morning before they go to class or before they start working. Uh, so I taught them a few lifting techniques. Of course, we didn't have weights or bars, so I used, to, uh, so I was, I, I used uh, rocks, big rocks, to, to do some deadlifts and some heavy lifting. Uh, or, or you know, piggybacks or stuff. So uh, that was that was really really good. Um, and they, and they liked it. So they used to give them. They said that they used to give us energy. You know, kind of they kind of switch a little bit, detach from work before they go back to research. <coughs> uh, so uh, my time with my fellow tutors. Um, so um, yeah, I was I was in the office uh, from eight to ten, but then uh, we had weekends off. Uh, not I mean. You have to be available as well at the weekend, but you could sneak out sometimes. Um, and, and I went out with my fellow tutors. Um, I'm not sure if these are uh, suitable for this professional uh, environment, but I'm just trying to show you that you can actually have fun there as well. But you have to be careful. So there's a swimming pool nearby. It's not very clean, but it's it's, it's you can <laughs> it's, it's it's doable. Uh, we have a common room in, in the in the house. So I lived off campus, which is a 10 minute walk. From the uh, from the centre, so I used to take the motorbike every day. Uh, so we used to sit together, you know, chat. It was great fun. Um, swimming pool sometimes, and this is actually in a nightclub, believe it or not. But that was a few minutes before I was boxed on the face <laughs> by a giant human being, and, and I left. So I got a big bruise actually on my face. So it's pretty dangerous. It's pretty dangerous, and, and mm -hmm. I don't really recommend the unit. I mean, those are fellow tutors, so these are my friends now. Um, and then, uh, so they kind of protected me, but I got boxed. Uh, now, we're coming towards the end. Uh, so, um, yeah, so it all sounds like a, a lot of fun, but then there's a bad bit. <laughs> um, so as I said, I lived off campus, with, uh, sharing a house with, uh, with uh, other tutors. They're local tutors. Uh, the internet, the internet was off every now and again, down, so you could stay probably one full day, two days without internet. Electricity, the same thing, and it's very, very frustrating actually. You do appreciate what you what you have now when you go there. Uh, and then I didn't have uh, air conditioning in my room, so I had only had a fan, uh, and that was absolutely horrendous. The water was the biggest issue. Um, 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 Okay, I have to tell you this. So, yeah, there's no water. Like, so we get the water probably like uh, once every week, or once every two weeks. Uh, the water we receive is straight away from the water company. They call it water company. So it's like, I'm not sure if it's fresh water, but then if the water company doesn't give you water, you won't get water. So they don't really save it somehow on a, like a big tank on the roof or something. 
However, they save it in the toilets. So as you can see here, that's not, that's not my toilet. I took this from the internet. I wouldn't actually take a photo of my toilet there. But then it's very, very similar. I just didn't have a bathtub. So as you can see, do you know what this is? What is this for? Absolutely no idea. I didn't know when I saw it in the bathroom. I didn't know really. This is the most important part in your life at Cameroon. There's actually water in there. So you save water in there. When the water is on, you have to fill that in first before you do anything. And then bucket shower. So you just use a bowl and then you, uh, you shower with it. And then you flush the toilet and stuff like that. But you have to avoid flushing the toilet because you need the water to have a shower. Um, and then, uh, uh, yeah, so I used to stay uh, sometimes uh, without a shower for a week. I used to go to bed without a shower. That's very normal. I got used to it. Uh, made me really appreciate what I have now. Um, uh, laundry, there's a laundry service, but I don't recommend it because the clothes get dirtier. <laughs> Honestly, it's not, it's not their fault. Uh, I'm not really blaming them. Um, it, it's, it's just a big center as well, and they don't have hot water, so it's all co cold water. And then they use something called savon. So the savon is it's just, it's just a big block of soap, and they use it. So I used to uh, hand wash all my clothes. Uh, you have to be careful as well because my knuckles got infected, so you have to, I mean, um, no. food, you get food from the canteen in the, in the, uh, on campus. The food is, uh, the menu is the same every week, it's very repetitive, it's not bad. When I, before, um, Emmanuel, when he interviewed me, he said to me, these, he didn't say these things in details, but he said it's going to be tough. It's not going to be like a walk in the park. So yeah, we're all walking around, dirty hands, um, um, no water. Uh, and it became very, very frustrating towards the end. Rats, rats are very normal. They walk around, they're in the canteen, in the kitchen, um, and you don't have to react when you see them or overreact when you see them. You don't criticize them because they are edible in Cameroon, so they eat them. Dogs as well, you won't see dogs walking around because they catch them and eat them. So uh, that's it, really. So there was a lot of stats in there, not in the presentation, a lot of you know learning in there because I had to look <coughs> things up as well um, to help the students. I learned a lot. I learned a lot personally, um, and um, it was a fantastic experience. And I would definitely, definitely go back there again. Thank you. Any questions? <coughs>
Okay, what I try to do is um, I try to send them links to uh, uh, PhD uh, opportunities. You know, that's that's the only thing I could do. Um, I heard that some of them, so James, the one I, uh, the one who worked on at SDE, he is in he's doing a PhD now in South Africa. Um, 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 some of them they still email me till now looking for PhD opportunities, so it's heartbreaking sometimes. Some of them just they're just back home, nothing. Um, is, um, one of them, they got some opportunities in Canada, let's say, a PhD. So most of them, they just, if they did something, they're doing a PhD, you know. Yeah, um, actually a sad story that there is a, some kind of a factory uh, or company that was actually uh, uh, ready to hire statisticians. Um, after the, uh, so they were actually promised to go there for placement and then, you know, and then um, uh, was actually set on fire. Whole company, so I was I was I was devastated for them. So they couldn't do any placement in statistics. Yeah. It was actually like a 20-minute drive from from Ames, so it was handy for them. Yeah. So uh, sorry, I don't have much like lots yeah. of good, lovely, big success stories. I was there only for two months there, but then um, that's it. Yeah. Uh, so so the, the students come from all, all over Africa. Is yes. That the idea? So they. They're not uh, Cameroonians or anything like that. All right. So, and they have to pass this exam to get in. Is that that? that uh, I don't think there's an exam. It's it's just an course application. Course so course they fill right. yeah fill in an yeah. application and then the, the academic director um, uh, decides who's going to be in. Obviously, they pick <coughs> the best the best students in Africa. Yeah. Um, and um, and they're actually very very the maths. I was actually impressed with the level of mathematics there. Um, they know a lot of pure mathematics, so they're, they're new to statistics, but then give them, I don't know, like a data set, and tell them, oh, you can actually analyze it in something called R. Yeah. In, in a matter of, of two days, you could see an R code there, with data set analyzed. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, they're, very, they're very smart, yeah, yeah, they're yeah, very smart. Yeah. Only one student struggled, is the cartogram student, which was a very difficult project, you had to look at the mathematics behind it. He didn't struggle in the mathematics. He struggled in the, in the, in the, vis in the running the codes in R and coding. He didn't really, he didn't really struggle in the mathematics. Mm -hmm. He was flying with the theorems and stuff. So, um, yeah. So they know a lot of, they know a lot of pure maths, really, not statistics, mm -hmm. not much statistics. Uh, I didn't really want to mention this, um, but yeah, you get a, you get a stipend of about 700 euros, probably 650 pounds. Um, I decided to leave it there uh, to get a big tank to save the water up on the roof and get a, uh, actually two tanks, one one at the at the ground level and one at the top, and a pump. So, because they said the water pressure is not high enough to reach the roof, so you could save it. So I, I suggested to save the water at ground level and pump it up. So I left the money there to buy two tanks and a pump. But till now, the money is still in the uh, in the account department, and um, they've done nothing. But I'm still I'm still following on that now. Uh, so yeah, you get a stipend if you want, uh, seven hundred six fifty pounds a month, uh, five hundred thousand. Uh, uh, when I first uh, uh, um, took the, the job or the opportunity, uh, I thought I would be able to work on my PhD there. But I didn't. <coughs> I didn't have any time to do this at all. Uh, so um, yeah, I had, to, I had to rush when I came back. And, uh, but then th thankfully I finished on time. But I don't regret it because it was an absolutely great opportunity, to be honest. And I learned a lot in terms of statistics as well, in terms of helping the students and supervising them. So I was literally playing the role of a supervisor especially the MSc students, they're not undergrad students, and the heavy projects as well. Mm -hmm. Can I just ask one more, is, is, is there, have you got information on where people can apply to, to do this in, in future? Uh, there should be some is information on, on, the, on the RSS website, yeah. but the, you, you, you can always email Emmanuel. Um, oops, sorry. Yeah, Emmanuel. <coughs> Um, his name's actually Emanuele, so this is how we call him. So, Emanuele. Yeah. 
Marco, the, the academic director, is also Italian. So yeah, he is the link. He is the coordinator. Emmanuel. But I think there is also a. Uh, it's also announced on uh, on Paris Fest next year. Just quickly ask: Did you do everything through French or English or a combo of both? Uh, I'm French educated. Uh, you mean yeah. the, there? Was like, is it really when you were there? Like, I'm guessing because you're like a francophone kind of history. Yes. So you uh, did it through French and then. No, everything is in English. Okay. Everything is in English. All the courses are in English, so they have to. Okay. The thesis should be in English. Yeah. I was able to communicate a bit, a bit with the francophones because I'm French educated. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, but no, everything should be in English. Yeah. It's all in English, so you don't have to worry.